After decades of secrecy, the federal government now admits there's stuff flying in the sky that they cannot explain. My feeling is that there is clearly something there. Sightings of unidentified aerial phenomena clustered around U.S. training grounds that maneuver abruptly at considerable speed without discernible means of propulsion. It is real. That, that's no longer a point of conjecture at this point. This admission gives new light to Minnesota's mothership of UFO stories. August 27, 1979, Warren, Minnesota, 20 miles from the North Dakota border. Sheriff's Deputy Val Johnson was on routine patrol after midnight when he saw an unusually bright light on Highway 220 hovering over the center of the road. He thought maybe a crash semi or a downed plane, but as he approached it, he says the light, without a sound, instantly jumped through the windshield, hitting him like a, quote, 200-pound pillow, knocking him out. His watch and car clock had stopped working. He says his teeth were fractured at the gum line. His eyes burned. A doctor said it appeared as if Johnson suffered welder's burn in his eyes. His story and injuries mystified the nation. It's fun to look through them all, a light in the night. The X-Files of the Red River Valley. But there's another piece of evidence that to this day brings the curious to the Marshall County Historical Society Museum. This is the big thing that they come to see from all over the United States. People have come to see this car. Val Johnson's squad car, damage and all, remains. Whatever hit him started with a broken headlight, and up here there is a weird dent right in the top of the hood. Broke the windshield, hit the reflector, and bent both of the antenna. When they found him, his watch and the car had stopped for 14 minutes. Who knows? <laughs> the sheriff's office back in 79 brought out experts from Honeywell and the Ford Motor Company to examine the damage. The crash investigator from Ford said the cracks in the glass collectively were unlike anything he'd seen before. No one in 42 years has been able to take all those facts and create a reasonable explanation as to what happened, including Val, who in 1980 said, quote, upon reflection, we've come to the conclusion that perhaps the creator has made other things we can't readily see or readily identify. And perhaps this is one of the things we encountered on the road. So where is Deputy Johnson today? Well, we asked about him in town, and people had told us that he moved away and stopped doing interviews on this a while ago. So we searched, found an address for a Val Johnson in Wisconsin. So we drove there, cold, knocked on the door, turned out it was him. We spoke to him for 20 minutes, but he did not want to go on record, he said, because of the stress that it's caused his family for a long time. He did, however, give us permission to pass on this notion. He hopes these UFO sightings and these new government reports maybe give people new perspective on his story.